In this video, we will be going through some of the features found in Watson Analytics. We will be uploading a spreadsheet, creating some discoveries, visualizations about that data, and then using the display area to create a dashboard. We're going to click New Data. You'll see there's a few different options here to import data. You can get it from another storage source or from an IBM Cognos report, from Twitter tweets. And we can also connect directly to a database and pull data, or you can upload a file from your computer. So I have this file about Blockbuster top 10 movies over the last 30 or 40 years, you know, how much money they made in genre and rating. But while it's importing, what's analytics doing some analysis? And it's, you know, putting some information and statistics together about the data itself. Now that it processed, we're going to click Refine. Uh, it really helps you shape the data. You can control the data on the way in before you start to build charts and everything. So right off the bat, you can see these first three columns, the year, the month, and the day. Those were out by Watson Analytics automatically based on the release date. Well, if we scroll over to these fields, you can see the numeric ones have what looks like a bar chart in the middle of it. And it's it's really just either relation of that value in that cell to other values in the rest of the column. So you kind of get an idea, you know, of the range of data. For example, in the audience score, you know, is this 2.9 a really high value? Well, it looks like it's kind of right in the middle. Now, clicking on a column header brings you to this filter menu where you can use it as a checklist. You can check and select the records that you want. In this case, I'm just choosing Action Adventure. And then it also has this feature, Invert, which is everything except the ones you had checked. And you can see the check mark switch. Now I'm actually filtering out Action and Adventure. The point of this is, let's say that you had to, you know, a big data set, but you wanted to hone in on certain things. So this ability in the Refine allows you to filter your data so you can focus, you can filter out rows, and you can filter out data that you, maybe you don't need in this particular case. So saw the filter that we just did on a categorical field. Now watch what happens when you click on a numerical field. Instead of the choosing, now it gives you the range of numbers. So if I pick a huge range, 1.5 billion to 3 billion, okay, by Avatar and Titanic. The only two movies that made that much money. So anyway, we're going to clear it back, full data set here. Um, here's some other things you can do while we're in Refine. If you click the statistics button, it shows you they gave each column that you imported some kind of rating. Now, it's not about the quality of your data. It's really about how much Watson Analytics can use that data to do other things. So, for example, the date it usually gets 100 because it can do things like build out a time hierarchy. So the other menu here is shows you information about the column sorting, also the aggregation method, for example, you know, the length of a movie, you'd probably want that to be average. And actually, Watson Analytics figured that out automatically. Rank and year, maybe that's something I would want to change to average. So I could say maybe what's the average rank for action movies. But I wouldn't want it to total together. All right, and then the last menu, the action menu here, this is where you can, maybe you have too much data. Maybe you don't need some of these columns. So I'm just going to get rid of a couple columns here. And it, it removes it from the data set, so they won't be available, you know, going forward. I won't have to sort through a column that I don't really need. So where you can create a column, you can create a calculation. So it kind of lets you, you can see A plus B, and it helps fill it in. You can choose a column, you can choose a function, has some basic minimum, maximum, things like that. And, it, you know, or you can just type a number in if you have some kind of ratio you need to create. There's also the ability to create a data group. Now, this is maybe when you, have, as some, you know, the business user, maybe you have some knowledge, and you know, I really want to group these bunch of things together and call that a group. 
for example, in the movie business, look how many different studios there are that have to do with 20th Century Fox. Maybe I just want to focus on all 20th Century Fox against the other big names, but I want to group them all together. So I can check all of those ones. I can name it. And I have this new field called Studio Group, and now, you know, grouping all of those different ones together. For the sake of time, we're going to continue on. I did finish out the group, and you'll see how it works. You can also create a hierarchy, and that has to do with drill down. So, for example, Watson Analytics created one automatically, and it's a year-to-day hierarchy. So it's saying you could choose a year, and it would show you the day that it's released. But you can go ahead and and build your own. You know, maybe there's some kind of gory subcategory relationship that you're familiar with. You can build that hierarchy on your own. It's going to save my refinement. It, what it does is it makes another data set. So once we're done with this, we're going to have our original spreadsheet data set and also the refinement. Once I save it, Then we're going to go back out to the main page. The navigator here in the upper left shows you what they're open there in the background. So I'm going to close this one. We're back on our data page here. And I'm going to click my refinement. And you can see already there's you know, some suggestions. Watson Analytics came up with some suggestions of what it thinks you might want to look at. Um, also, at the top, you can start typing a question, or I'm just going to type one of the you know, the phrase that I want to use. So adjusted gross. And now it gives me some questions about that. So let's look at this one. What is the trend of adjusted gross over a year? So that makes sense. You know, I, I would think, you know, movies be more popular. There's more movie theaters. More people are going to the movies. That makes sense. You'll notice along the bottom, there are all the columns that are part of your data set. We saw these in the refinement and we could have, you know, remove some or created more, and, they, you know, they would all be here. I want to see how rating affects this. I'm just going to drag rating, and I'm going to drop it in. Okay, so it made a different line. It's still a little messy. Maybe I'm going to change it to this other type of recommended chart, the area chart. Okay, now I can really see, okay, PG-13 has really taken off. I mean, it really has a big market share there. Well, let's try to see. Also, if I wanted to change this, you can change that so right at the top. You can just click on the blue items. And there, I changed it to this is my studio group that I made. And maybe I just want to focus on the big ones. So by me grouping all those together, as you can see, really what I'm noticing here is maybe DreamWorks. Look at that. It started in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they've had a good market share since. So you can you think about it, that's when all the computer graphics and everything really started taking off. Okay, so let's go back out to the front here. I'm going to start a new discovery. And again, I'm going to use adjusted gross, but this time I'm going to use some other language as well. Adjusted gross by title. In this case, I'm going to go with this suggestion here, the packed bubble. Each movie title gets a bubble. What's going on here on the right, you'll see that there's a couple of suggestions. Again, Watson Analytics is coming up with that it would that you might want to know so maybe you want to look into this audience score versus adjusted gross you know it kind of help you find the next insight okay so i'm going to save this pack bubble we're going to use it later so let me just new discovery set let me give it a name all right then again just the navigator i'm going to Close the other discovery that we did. All right, so I'm back here at my two data sets and discover there's the back bubble that we just made and saved. Now I'm going to go to display. And this is where you create a dashboard, or there's some other options. You could make an infographic or an expert storybook. It's still in data, but it's something that IBM is working on, you know, to really help you tell a story about your data. So here we're going to just go with the basic dashboard. So I'm going to choose this template, and then we're going to navigate, and I'm going to bring in the bubble chart that we just made. 
All right, so there's all the bubbles. Now let's do some customization here. Once I have it open, I dragged it on. Now these filters, I, I can use these as a prompt. Maybe I want to, you know, let the user some exploration just real easy with a single click. I can put some prompts up here. Maybe I'll go with rating because that was the point of interest earlier. And then studio. So let you, you know, reorganize things the way you want. You know, oh, you know, I've actually maybe I need a little bit more room. So I'm just going to move this over. All right, it automatically, here we go, lines up. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust these a little bit. Here we go. When you click an object in the upper right of this chart, you'll see this button brings you to the screen. Gives you more properties. Now this window is just like the window that we were in when we were in discovery mode. So remember, now we're in display, but by clicking that button brings us right back here. You can do all the same kind of things at the bottom and see the data. In this case, I'm going to remove the legend and I'm going to give it a title. Instead of that active question, I'm going to just make my own title. All right. So there we go. Now we can just use the check boxes and you can start filtering data. You can start, you know, to really see what's going on behind the data here. So PG-13, okay, there were a lot of PG-13s. Look at all those big movies. Avatar and Titanic were both PG-13. Let's see what else, maybe I'll, some years here. So 2011, okay, Harry Potter, yep, big movie, Pirates of the Caribbean. Take a look at 1997, Titanic, huge, right? I mean, it, this is just, you can tell, I mean, I know this data set is about movies, but it's real easy to start exploring and answering the questions, you know, why was PG-13 so big? Okay, Armageddon, right, and Private Ryan, there's a lot of big movies. Just to recap, we uploaded data. We organized it, and we did some discovery. We had to, we kind of came up with some questions, and we're able to explore and answer our own questions. And we even created a dashboard to help us out. There you have it. That's Watson Analytics. It's available right now for a free trial, so go ahead and sign up. Now for 30 days for free.